All right, this section we're going to talk about some relations and functions. All right, so first vocab word we have is a relation. Okay, this is simply any pairing of input and output values. So any two sets that are grouped together. Okay, the domain is the set of all the input values. The range is the set of all the output values. Okay, you're used to calling domain X and range Y, that's because X is traditionally an input value and Y is traditionally an output value. So we have some examples down here of some relations. Okay, this one shows your domain of two going to your range of A and then B and then C. So if you were to write these as points, that would be 2A, two 2B, two and 2C. All right, over here we have another relation. Okay, you're familiar with the xy axis. This is the x axis and this is the y axis. So that means any point that falls along this line here, 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 this one up here. So anything that falls along the x axis are your input values and then their corresponding number on the y-axis, those are your output values. So for this point, for instance, let's say we had it marked at negative 1 to negative 3 for the in input, then it'd be at approximately 1, 2, 3, 4 for the output. Because we can see that that tracks over there and down there. That's how you tell input and output. All right, we have another example down here. Okay, this is also a relation. Okay, you have input values, output values, anything that can be graphed on an xy axis is a relation. All right, now relations get special when we start calling them functions. All right, so your definition for function is a relation where each input has only one specific output. Each input has one specific output. So if we take a look at this example that we had on the last page, the 2 going to the A and the B and the C, okay, this is actually not a function. I'm going to use fxn to abbreviate function. The reason being is that this input has three outputs. Okay, Each input is only allowed to have one specific output. If we take a look over here, this one actually is a function because the input A has an output of 2, the input B has a single output 2, the input C has a single output 2. Okay, they all have the same output, but each one is a specific one to that input value. Okay, the way you can tell from a set of points is no repeated x values. So if I were to write these points out over here, that's A, 2, B, 2, and C2. See how none of the X's repeat A, B, C, but over here this would be 2A, 2B, and 2C. See how those X values all repeat? That's how you can tell right there. 2, 2, 2. That is not a function. And Algebra 1, that's when you first started learning about functions, maybe a little bit before that, but definitely in Algebra 1 you went over the Coke machine. So I'm going to do that again with you, just kind of reiterate what a function is. Alright, so you go to a Coke machine and you put in your dollar, or however much they cost now. Okay, and this one's got some choices here. We've got our Coke, we've got our Diet Coke, and we've got Dr. Pepper. Coke machines work exactly like a function because if I go up there and I click on Coke, then I expect a Coke to pop out of the hole. If I go and I pick Dr. Pepper, I expect a Dr. Pepper to come out of the hole. Okay, you would be really mad if you clicked on Coke and a Diet Coke came out instead. And there is nothing you could do, that's just what you get. 
That would be this situation over here, a non-function, where we could press a button and any one of three different options could come out. Okay, we don't want that. We want our Coke machines to be functions. We want our input value of Coke to output a Coke. Nothing else. Okay, and you've seen a lot of Coke machines that actually have multiple Coke buttons. Okay, that's like this example over here where we have multiple things going to the same output, so both of these buttons are going to give me a Coke, but I know I'm getting a Coke when I press the Coke button, so that's why that's okay. You're allowed to have multiple items go to the same output. You just can't have a single item go to multiple outputs. You don't want to um, take a chance on getting some random soda when you pay for your Coke. So that's how the Coke machine works and why that's a good representation of a function. Okay, determining functions from a graph. This is where you use the vertical line test. I'm sure you have seen this before. Alright, so you can see on this first example that I can draw vertical lines all over this graph. And it's only ever going to hit the graph in one spot. No matter where I try to draw it, only one spot. Okay, this is a function. Okay, if you can only hit it in one spot. If you can draw a vertical line on a graph and hit it in more than one spot, one, two, three, one, two, three, then that's when you have a non-function. Vertical line test can't hit more than once. Anything more than once and it's not a function. Alright, last thing we're going to cover is function notation. So you're familiar with the y equals 5x plus 3. That gives you an xy point. Okay, you know, x is the x value and the y value is at the output. It's what you get when you do 5x plus 3 because that equals y. Well, function notation, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but um, all, people always struggle with it at the beginning of the year. Um, is basically just replaces y. f of x replaces y. So instead of having x, y, you know, I have x, f of x, but it's still the same thing. That equals 5x plus 3. Same thing. So there's a little caution over here for you. f of x is not f times x or f multiplied by x. It's the value of f at x. So notice the way I'm saying it. f of x, not f times x. So our example that we're going to try is evaluate the function at these three different points. So this is f of 0. Now keep in mind that's an x. f of x. f of 1 half is an x. f of negative 2, that's an x. So anytime you see this notation, they're telling you plug this number in for x in the equation. So f of 0 means I do negative 2 times 0 plus 1. Well, I know that that is equal to 0, so f of 0 must equal 1. Okay, let's try it for the 1 half. f of 1 half. Plug 1 half in for x. Negative 2 times a half plus 1. Alright, well, in this one I know the 2's are going to cancel out with each other, so that leaves me a negative 1 plus 1, which is 0 f of a half equals zero. And box my answers. Alright, let's try this negative two. f of negative two. So that means plug negative two in for x. So that gives me negative two times negative two plus one. Alright, I know a negative times a negative is a positive four plus one is five. So just like our last lesson where we evaluated four different letters, see when I plug these in, I put them in parentheses, okay, and then you use your order of operations to evaluate, and you've got your answer. All right, that's it.